I would like to talk about the evolution of the mu69 from a binary planetesimal into contact via Coselidov oscillations and nebular drag. So let's start with a cartoon image. About 4.5 billion years ago, remote chunks of rock and metal and ice came together to form two lobes. These two lobes were in orbit in each other and somehow they spiraled in into contact and formed what we know as MU69, aka Arrokoth. Uh, in this talk, I am going to assume that the lobes are formed by whatever mechanism. And then uh, we are in the situation here where the two lobes have to lose angular momentum. Here, I'm going to break one of my rules of giving talks, which is to never show equations. But these equations are simple enough that everybody can follow. This is the gravity between the two bodies, and this is the drag force. You have here the body one and the body two. These are the equations of motion for that. You can solve these equations for the common separation, which is R1 plus R2, and that would be this equation here. What you have is the angular momentum on this side here. So this is how the evolution equation for the angular momentum becomes. And the solution of this is an exponential decay of the angular momentum. This line here, the red line, is the numerical solution. And then the dashed line here is the predicted exponential decay of angular momentum. So yeah, they match. However, the time to contact when you plug in the numbers turn out to be still very, very, very high. It's about 100 million years. That's because these objects are so big that their drag time is still very, very large. The drag is weak. They have too much mass to be moved around by gas ray. So there is another mechanism that we have to consider. The other mechanism we could consider would be the wind. Let's consider the evolution of the lobe due to the drag force that they experience from the wind in the nebula. This wind is because in the center of mass of the binary is orbiting the sun at the Keplerian rate. However, the gas in the disk is supported by the pressure, so it orbits at a slightly sub-Keplerian. The difference between the center of mass velocity and the velocity of the gas is usually of the order of 50 meters per second. That sounds like not much, but it's a lot compared to the binary orbital velocity. These objects are very low mass, so they are orbiting each other at about 0.1 meter per second. So we solved them for the wind solution. This is the, in black is the numerical calculation, in red is the analytical solution. As you see here, the semi-major axis almost doesn't change, but the eccentricity immediately shoots to one, and the angular momentum shoots into zero. What we're looking at is a loss of angular momentum at nearly constant energy. So geometrically, this is what would be happening. You have the body here, uh, initially in a circular orbit. Because the orbit is losing angular momentum, it's becoming flatter and flatter. Uh, but at constant energy, so that the semi-major axis in the end is still almost the same as it started with. Eventually, then the orbit becomes a line and then it, they plunge into contact when the eccentricity becomes one. Great, except that it doesn't work in the Kuiper belt. It works in the asteroid belt. The wind has a strong effect in the distances of the asteroid belt, but indeed it has little effect in the Kuiper belt. What we're looking here is the effective drag time for different velocities of the wind. So this line here, the blue line, is for zero velocity, meaning no wind, there is zero pressure gradient. And different lines here up to the violet line, which is 100 meters per second. And this red line here is a typical pressure gradient that gives you a wind of 50 meters per second. As you see here, it starts to decrease indeed at the distances of the asteroid belt. Then you get drag times of the order of 1 million year. But at the Kuiper belt, the drag times remain beyond 10 million years. That is because the uh, Kuiper belt is more viscous than the asteroid belt. What you're looking here is the distance in the nebula, and this is the radius in kilometers of the body. This is the line here where the Reynolds number past the object is uh, one, so you have linear drag. And then on here you have a turbulent drag, the drag becomes quadratic. MU69 is straddling the transition between linear and quadratic drag. Uh, but what is happening at linear drag is that what you gain on one side of the orbit, you lose on the other side. So the net loss in angular momentum is zero. Okay, so let's look at what else could be causing then the bodies to come into contact if it still takes more than the lifetime of the nebula to get these bodies into contact by drag alone. We have to look at the effect of inclination then. So all these models that I showed before were for inclination equal to zero. So I want you to look here at the inclination 60 degrees. 
Let's specifically look at the inclination and energy. What you see here is uh, for an initial eccentricity of about 0 0.9, the eccentricity is going down, but the inclination is going up. This is typical of Coselli Dove oscillations. So Coselli Dove oscillations are oscillations that happen when you have bodies in, in an inclined orbit perturbed by a distant third body. In Coselli Dove oscillations, you are conserving the vertical component of the angular momentum not the total angular momentum of the inner binary. And due to that, you can exchange eccentricity for inclination. So to export this, we added the drag force into a model that had cosi lead oscillations and tidal friction in the permanent quadrupole of the orbiters. So these are the results. This is pure cosi. This is the semi-major axis uh, in units of the radius of the binary. This is the semi-major axis in kilometers. This is a hill radius of Arakoth and the initial inclination. This line here is the prediction for contact for only Kozai Lidov. As we see here, the field dots are simulations that had contact and the empty ones are the ones that did not have contact. We can reproduce that in the model. So now let's add uh, extra physics. Let's now include the types. What you're seeing here is essentially the same thing that we had for the cosi only, which means that the induced tides are not really mattering much for this problem. The situation starts to change once you include the permanent quadrupole. So now what is going on is that the permanent quadrupole is inducing precession, which breaks the cosi lead of resonance. Now you start to have a forbidden zone where uh, precession is too strong and you do not have cosi lead of oscillations anymore. And now the full problem with uh, the permanent J2 and the gas reg. As you see here, the J2 forbidden window still exists. Uh, J2, the permanent quadrupole still leads to precession, but you have a much larger window for contact due to the gas reg. Let's see what is happening in here. These are the four models that I showed before. The blue is for cosi plus the uh, induced tides. The yellow is the uh, cosi plus induced the tides plus the permanent quadrupole. And you already see here a difference in behavior between the blue, which is a very regular one, and the J2, the permanent quadrupole, which starts to do some extra oscillations on top of it because it is affecting the cosi. And once you included the drag, what is happening here? Now the semi-major axis is decreasing because you are sapping energy from the orbit. You're removing energy from the orbit. And now the cosi Lidov oscillations that in the orange simulation alone were not enough to bring to contact, because the semi-major axis is decreasing, eventually you can reach the distances where you'd have contact between the two lobes. This dashed line here is 30 kilometers. That means the two bodies reach at contact. So the cosi oscillations alone cannot do it. The drag alone cannot do it. But when you combine causal Lidov oscillations with the permanent quadrupole and with the drag force, you can reach contact. So conclusions, we solved the binary planetesimal problem with gas rack. We implemented the solution into a cosi plus tidal friction code. We, um, we find that a contact is possible in the asteroid belt within um, 100 million years. We find that contact via cosi cycles in the, in the Kuiper belt is possible. Uh, the orbits become grazing but the window of contact is narrow. Uh, however, the window of contact is increased by the permanent quadrupole and the drag force. Predictions of the model is that about 10% of Kuiper belt called classical binaries should be contact binaries. And the velocities at contact should be at about three to four meters per second, which is the escape velocity scaled by the asymmetry of the bodies. An open question is um, to use single average or n body or full n body models to reproduce the final inclinations. Finally, I'd like to advertise that we're hiring. We're hiring two postdocs and two PhD students to work on a joint project between five institutes on streaming instability and hydrodynamic instabilities. Myself at New Mexico State University and four other gentlemen here in this conference, Andrew Yuding, University of Arizona, Jack Simon in Iowa State University, Chao Ching Young at University of Nevada, Las Vegas, and Orkani Mohan and NASA Ames. One of the ads is already up at the job register and the other ads are still gonna go up. Thank you and I'll take questions now.